All right guys, what is going on? Today we are talking quick hitches for your tractor. We're gonna to try to keep it brief for you today, just explain what these quick hitches are, how they can help you, why they're so popular. We're gonna to try to hit a lot of highlights about quick hitches and just give you some differences and some similarities to help you make a better decision. I'm going to attempt to answer why you may want a quick hitch for your tractor. But let's be real, this is just what I had in inventory here, okay? So there's four different manufacturers right here. These are four different quick hitches that all essentially do the same thing for you. This is not a complete representation of what's on the market right now. It's just what I had in inventory at the time. I always wanna provide objective information and that can be challenging being a dealer for just some of these quick hitches here because obviously I'll make money if I sell you the ones that I represent, right? However, part of my business model is to sell things that are a good value. So whatever dollar amount that you're spending, you're getting a very good value for that dollar amount. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why would you wanna buy it? I say all of that to say, I try to be objective. Some of this is subjective, I just can't help it. But I wanna give you an honest assessment. And I'll just give you my opinion on why I sell these certain quick hitches and I don't the others. Some of them I just don't have the opportunity to. All I wanna do is answer some of those questions and let you make that decision. We're gonna get started here in just a second, but really quick, if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button below. Also, if you just Google Good Works Tractors, you'll find my Facebook page. Head there if you're on Facebook, click like. I put a lot of cool stuff on there as well. I'm also on Instagram, so follow me on there. And last but not least, follow goodworkstractors.com. I'd love to put together a tractor package for you, sell you an attachment, answer any question you might have. Goodworkstractors.com. All right, here we go. Okay, so I wanna start off by saying, there's one thing I'm not gonna talk about, and that is how to hook up a quick hitch to your tractor or hook up a quick hitch to your attachment. I have done some other, what I think are pretty good videos about that, and I'm gonna post links above here. So at some point in this video here, if you wanna watch how to use a quick hitch or how to hook it up to your tractor, click on one of those links and you can check that out as well after you're done watching this video. It's an easy process to do, but it's kind of a process in and of itself, and I don't wanna take time away from just kind of going over what these are in general here and answering some specific questions about them. Okay, so first up, let's go over the similarities here. Now you're gonna see all these look extremely similar, and they should, and there's a reason for that. There's an ASAE specification that controls the dimensional spacing of these quick hitches. And so there's gonna be tolerances within there that they have to conform to. So every quick hitch you see here and every quick hitch on the market should conform to that ASAE specification. If you don't see where it says that, and occasionally I might not put that in my description as well, just ask a question to the manufacturer or to me or to your dealer, and they can confirm that it was built to that ASAE specification. Oftentimes you're gonna hear about compatibility issues between quick hitches and attachments that don't match together, they don't mate, they don't fit together like they're supposed to. And on a rare occasion, even I will have that happen with either an attachment or a quick hitch. So within this specification, it's a pretty tight parameter that these quick hitches and the attachments all have to fit within. And so you have a spacing measurement that's gonna be between these lower links down here, and then you also have a spacing measurement that's gonna go from the lower links to the upper link. So you will see that all these quick hitches are gonna have bolt holes that are on the top link, okay, to allow you to adjust it up and down. That's gonna aid in compatibility and flexibility with the attachments. So I said on occasion, I do have something that doesn't match up, whether it's a quick hitch or the attachment or a combination of both, the match just isn't there. And so again, with these tolerances being so tight and so narrow with everything having to fit and match up, occasionally you are gonna have an attachment that doesn't quite just fit the bill, you know? And so you can accomplish that by a couple of ways, either shave off a little bit of material, sometimes even just a little bit of paint, um, or you can simply send it back, get a new one, and hopefully that cures the problem. However, I'm telling you, 99 out of 100, probably more like 999 out of 1,000 times, I don't have an issue with this. Okay, I brought the camera down low here, that way you can see what I wanna talk about next. And that is gonna be the cross bracing, or the support between the top and the side, as you can see. Pretty chunky and beefy on some of these, okay? These black ones here, you can see in the corners there, a lot of chunky bracing. The iMatch doesn't actually have that kind of same, a little bit of bracing, but not the same amount. This is a land pride up here, okay? And you can see there's some cross bracing there, just a thin plate of steel on the far side, all right? And so all of these quick hitches will be rated for at least up to 40 horsepower, if not higher. I've used them on many four series tractors without issue. So I think, you know, as with a lot of farm equipment, they are, um, oh, what's the term? Overbuilt for what they're gonna be on. And I don't really think you're gonna have much of an issue unless you are really just pushing the limits of your tractor. 
So the difference there in the cross bracing just shows you one of the ways that these quick hitches can be constructed differently while remaining within the same dimensional tolerances of that ASAE specification. One of the other big ways that they can vary is by weight, and that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go ahead and weigh each one of these quick hitches and we'll show you how much they weigh. You know what, before we weigh these, we're gonna go ahead and give you a little background information on these quick hitches here. So number one, these are all category one, three point quick hitches, okay? So they're not gonna be category two, no limited cat one. So like the smaller land prides are not included in here. This is all apples to apples to apples to apples as best as possible, okay? So now let me tell you about each one of these quick hitches here in particular. Mounted on my 1025 here is gonna be a WorkSaver quick hitch. This is manufactured in the USA in Litchfield, Illinois. Okay, so now for the sales pitch. So there's a few reasons why I like these WorkSaver quick hitches and why I choose to sell them. I can sell a lot of different manufacturers. I really love selling these WorkSaver quick hitches. So reason one, they're gonna include a set of these bushings. These bushings are required. They're gonna go on the bottom pins of any attachment that you put on your three-point hitch, okay? So you really wanna have a set of these bushings for every attachment that you're gonna hook up to your three-point hitch. Yes, some guys will take these off and put them on to the next attachment. However, that really defeats the purpose of having a quick hitch in the first place, which is efficiency. So the work saver is gonna include linch pins here, while the iMatch for sure includes cotter pins. These are just a nice convenience to have if you're attaching and detaching your quick hitch. A lot of folks just leave their quick hitch on and it never comes off, but if you need to attach it to a non-quick hitch compatible attachment, you wanna take the quick hitch off, or maybe you have a backhoe you wanna put on, something along those lines, it's nice to have a real easy pin to work with here versus the kind that once you kind of deform it, it's a real pain to kind of work with and get it back together to go through the hole and then you got to use the wires. You know what I mean? So it's just a nice convenience. It's not the end of the world. They'll both get the job done, but just a nice touch by WorkSaver. WorkSaver includes what's called a floating top link or floating top link adapter, something along those lines. You'll hear it called multiple things. And so this opens up the versatility. So if you do have some non quick hitch compatible attachments, you can put this in place of the top hook that's on the quick hitch itself and get a lot of flexibility there up and down, that kind of thing. So I'll show you what I mean. So the last reason I really like these WorkSaver quick hitches is that they include this extra bracket here called a top link adapter. And you can put this on, you can take off that hook, which I've done here. You can take this hook off, okay? That would normally go right in here. And you can put this on, and this is a floating top link adapter here, and it allows you almost infinite adjustment to hook up to a top link on an attachment, okay? So if you have a specifically a non-quick hitch compatible attachment or something that just has a really goofy top link to it, you can put this on. You can actually shorten your drawbar as, as much as possible so this kind of angles in so it's not sticking out, extending way beyond the vertical point if you don't want it to and uh, make it work. So this is also included with the WorkSaver Quick Hitch. So a nice bonus from WorkSaver is the fact that they're manufactured in Litchfield, Illinois, right here in the USA. Okay, so this one here is a Land Pride QH15. It came in on an L-Series Kubota a while back. Just kind of kept it on hand so folks can see what they are. And uh, you'll see it's got the multiple holes in the top link, which is a great feature as well to adjust that top link up and down, or the top hook, I should say. Very similar construction to the others. You'll note that difference there in the cross bracing underneath. Take a look at the back side here so you can see that. Look on the far side and then right there. Okay. This guy here is the popular John Deere iMatch. The nice thing is you can get these in green. I can't sell the work savers in green, unfortunately. Take a look at the cross bracing there. Okay. Again, multiple locations to adjust that top hook. Very similar in construction. This guy here is a Tar River. This is very similar to a Harbor Freight Quick Hitch, okay? Good channeling there, cross bracing. Really the rest of it's similar in construction. Again, you have the adjustment there for the top hook. Okay, so we're gonna weigh these now. I put this uh, piece of steel here simply because they're U-shaped and I want something, to, I'm gonna put the top up here, let the legs hang down and hopefully rest on here. Um, and then uh, I zeroed out the scale, so 0, 0.0 right now with this piece of steel on here as well.
Okay, so the Land Pride QH15 weighs in at 68.4 pounds. Next up here is the John Deere I match. Okay, 65.8 pounds. Okay, this one here is the Tar River Quick Hitch. This is similar to a Harbor Freight. Okay, you'll see 56.0 pounds. Okay, last one up here is the Work Saver Quick Hitch. 71.2 pounds for the Work Saver Quick Hitch, okay? All right, so those kind of results are ones that speak for themselves. You can see what the weight is, you can see what you're paying for then, right? So weights kind of speak for themselves, right? You know, I mean, you can kind of tell with more cross bracing, you would think that the Work Saver would weigh more than the iMatch and the Land Pride. However, the Work Saver looks very similar to the Tar River. But what was there? There was a 15, 16 pound difference between the Work Saver and the Tar River. The work saver ended up being the heaviest out of the bunch there, so perhaps that's attributed to more cross bracing, perhaps a little bit thicker steel, something along those lines. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a critical dimension here on all of these, which is a center line to center line of the lower link points here. I'm really not worried about lower to upper because all of these, again, have the adjustable positions here, so you really have a lot of flexibility within there. More concerned about left to right on the two lower links. Let's see what the work saver reads here. We're looking at about 28 and a quarter. Next here, we'll do the Land Pride. And again, this is very approximate, you know, don't hold me to it, but we're very close here, 28 and a quarter inch. Now let's do the John Deere I-Match. The John Deere I-Match is about 28 and a half center to center. Let's take a look at the Tar River. The Tar River is 28 and a half as well, center to center. Okay, so what we can see here is they're all within a quarter inch, and that's, again, I am just put it down and run the tape across. I'm not exactly, I'm trying to get close to center to center there, but it's not, this is not scientific, okay? This is just to get you close enough, and I can tell you that a quarter inch is close enough for this measurement here. Okay, so now let's touch on cost or price, and I really don't want to put specific prices in here because this video lasts for years and years, and prices fluctuate and change over time. However, I can say that if we're gonna compare new to new to new to new, to new, I don't know, all four of them across the board new, I can tell you that that Tar River, similar to a Harbor Freight, is gonna be at the lowest end price point, okay? This can be the cheapest one you can get. Then you step up to another tier, which is really where the Work Saver and the iMatch and the Land Prides and a lot of the more quality, more robust uh, um, manufactured quick hitches are gonna be at. And I can tell you that what I found is the Land Pride is the most expensive with the iMatch following closely behind it and then the Work Saver being actually the cheapest among those three. And so again, you get the Work Saver with that floating top link adapter, which sometimes is valuable, sometimes not, I get that. You get that extra set of bushings and you also get the convenience of those pins, which some, some of them come with and some of them don't, but it's just nice to know that the Work Saver does. And again, those Work Savers are made in the USA right in Litchfield, Illinois, which is a bonus. I know these aren't all the options, but I thought four was a pretty good representation at some different levels and price points and manufacturers, uh, especially some from the major manufacturers out there with John Deere and Kubota and their uh, sister companies or partner companies with their attachments. So I felt like it was a pretty fair representation. Hey, make sure you leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I get things wrong sometimes. We all learn something new every day and we get smarter, but some of these things speak for themselves today and I'll let you make your own decision on the right quick hitch for you.